All right, we should be live. I'm just going to give it a few seconds to uh, for it to come back here on uh, my phone that it is indeed working and the sound is okay and all that. So there's a bit of a delay there. So we are live, and uh, this is just going to be, hopefully, a very quick video on uh, some misconceptions people seem to have about running Linux, and uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my ugly mug out of the way so you can see the whole screen <clears throat> minimize that minimize Firefox I'll leave the chat up here and um, and if anyone asks any questions in the chat I will try to answer them as best as possible and one of the misconceptions is that there's not a GUI and you have to do everything in the terminal and that's just simply not true let's go ahead and move this um, I'm running Manharo XFCE and uh, so it's the XFCE desktop environment. And it's very much like the Windows XP interface. You got your start menu, your quick launchers, and then it shows you what windows are open. And of course, we got workspaces here, but. Um, and I'll go ahead and make this look a little bit more like Windows. So I want to move this panel. And I just right click panel preferences unlock it and I can grab it and move it down here lock it back and close that and you know it's basically the same layout as XP with your start menu there's a quick launcher for the file browser um, so there's a full GUI. There's no reason. And it's not hard to learn. It's it's you know, it's as simple as Windows XP. There's your you got all your sub menus over here, or you could just uh, start typing, such as say Lutris. Oops. Now when you out of the box <clears throat> these quick launchers are not there you have to manually add them yourself but let's let's I'm gonna put Lutris up there on the on the panel I guess that would be called the taskbar on Windows I'm just gonna right click and boom add the panel and see it shows up there so we'll go ahead and then I'll go ahead and move it move over to Boom, the quick launcher section there. And so, no need for the terminal. You've got a full function graphical user interface. And uh, now, installing software is actually easier than uh, Windows because like Windows you'd be hunting through websites and uh, trying to find an uh, X, uh, EXE to uh, run. So 
So let's uh and but some stuff <laughs> All right, hey Zany. So uh and you know, it's not all it's not all roses. Your your Microsoft Office suite's not going to work. Adobe products are not going to work, and that is not the fault of Linux. That is the fault of Microsoft and Adobe, and there's really no good reason for it because small independent developers, even those where it's just a single person walk, working by themselves, can provide us Linux folks a Linux build. Um, Adobe just refuses to. Now, there are alternatives. But, let's face it. There is going to be a time here. There is going to be a time investment involved in learning new programs. So let's just search Office here. And, oh, come on. All right. Try again. Sometimes it don't work the first time. I'm not sure why. And we'll see. We got LibreOffice. It's probably the most popular one. And, yes, there will be um, some time involved. And there's other ones. There's FreeOffice, GoOffice. But, like I said, LibreOffice would be, and others. And you just, here, let me get this out of the way. You just click Install. And you're done. There's no reason to go hunting around on websites. Um, open, here. What, something I am going to install is I'm open MW. Let's find that. I'm going to, I haven't installed this yet. Oh, come on. It... <laughs> I don't know. That usually doesn't do that. But now that I'm on now that I'm trying to show this off, there we go. Boom, install. Apply. And well, here's here's the thing. Here's one of the reasons why Linux is more secure. I'm installing a program, which means I'm actually doing something that changes the operating system. So I have to put in my password, or it's not going to work. So you, you can't do anything that will actually change the system. Hit apply, and it will start installing. So, and then I'll go ahead and... Uh, put all the files where they need to be later on after this part gets uh, and that's how easy it is to install software now your Adobe products um, they don't work there are both um, open source and professional alternatives and yes again it's going to take, uh, there is going to be a learning curve. It's not, they're not just drop-in replacements. And depending upon how professional you need those tools to be, something like OpenShot might just be good enough. Um, another popular one. And uh, these are available on Windows also, so you can try these programs on Windows before you make the switch and see see what it's like, if, if that's something you want to do. <laughs> um, right? Yeah, it's... Um, and it's a... Uh, Zany in the chat for those of you who may watch this later on. Another, when we're talking about it's not all roses. Oh, let's look up Caden Live here. 
it's not consist it's not a consistent experience amongst all hardware and that is that is an issue in the case of uh, this Lenovo 6 I would normally run an Ubuntu base called Zubuntu which has the same desktop manager XFCE I like the and and there's a there's just a whole bunch of choices you got what they call classic type desktop environments which would be XFCE and Mate would be examples of a classic style <laughs> um but if you tr so uh I forgot where I was at now reading the chat no Pro Adobe Premiere is not going to work but if you truly need there are alternatives if, if you truly do need professional grade software DaVinci Resolve and Lightworks is available on Linux so professional and then of course blender is totally a professional software also open source but boy there's a learning curve on that one <laughs> so for the st software that's not available there are alternatives and yes there is going to be a time investment in learning new software um, the other one that's a real that's a real hang-up that may be a real hang-up is uh, um, SolidWorks, the 3D CAD, the 3D CAD area, isn't uh, isn't doing too good on Linux yet. And like I said, that's not the fault of Linux. That's the fault of the software developers that just refuse to provide support. So basically, um, that's how easy it is to install software. No terminal required. No hunting around different websites for an ex or for an exe file that works. Um, but getting back to this, uh, what this guy's talking about, I would normally run Zubuntu, an Ubuntu base, on all my machines. But however, this Lenovo Yoga Six is fairly new hardware, and uh, Ubuntu is what they would call a stable release and it had issues on Ubuntu so I said okay I'll try going with a rolling release and uh, I went with Manharo XFCE because it's arch for dummies or arch for boomers and you don't really need to know anything about arch and with the newer packages that an arch base provides um, it fixed this laptop right up. No more issues. Um, I'm, I can't stand this panel down here. I'm going to stick it back up on the top where I like it. <laughs> but I was just showing, it's, it's very much the, the user interface, depending upon your desktop environment, can be very much like Windows or not, depending upon which desktop environment you choose and uh, Mate is another one but what I didn't like about Mate the last time I used Mate and I don't know if it's still like this you couldn't copy and paste from the chat for some reason and it drove me nuts and I just, I never went, I was like, never went back to Mate again. And of course the wind's going to pick up now. I hope it don't sound terrible. And so I just stick with XFCE. I don't like GNOME, which is what they call one of those more modern style desktop environments. Now let's talk about games. And you know, a lot of your proprietary software is available, like Discord, Spotify, it just depends on your use case whether this is going to be a good fit for you or not. Um, but a lot of the software will be the same, like here's OBS, that you use on Windows. And let's, uh, and here's like, you know, there's all, it's, 
Some of this stuff is called different because Pulse Audio is something that doesn't exist on Windows. It's the, uh, the basic Linux audio manager, but it's the same thing, basically. So, let's go back and minimize that. Now let's get to gaming. That's hit and miss. And it depends on the game. And some things will work just fine. Hit install. Um, I kind of touched on it a little bit. In that I would normally use uh, Zubuntu. Ubuntu base which is considered a stable release but I needed newer packages so I went with this rolling release Monharo on this particular laptop. I'm still running uh, Zubuntu on the 3400G desktop and uh, Zany in the chat had bleeding bleeding edge hardware and he was having issues for what I think a month was it? But uh, it looks like he's saying everything's all his issues are gone now. So. So if you're on bleeding edge hardware. You might have an issue for a moment. But Linux will catch up to it. And maybe he can. Uh, comment some more of that in the chat. Um, now the two. We have the Steam, as far as games go, we have the Steam client, and I don't have that running, so I'm going to go ahead and start Steam up. And this last Steam stale, <laughs> I really, 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 really did try to find something newer on sale that I wanted, but it just didn't... There's just not very many new games that I'm interested in. Valheim, sure, but... Um, so I got Far Cry and Far Cry 2. Right, but for someone... For someone coming to Linux from Windows, they're not, they're not going to see also. They're going to see Pulse. Like if you... Click here and go to the audio mixer. Pulse is going to show up. Um, you know, Pulse audio volume control. Except for it's PAVU instead of PAVC. But so they're not a new user is not going to know anything about also. They're just going to see Pulse. And uh, there's a GUI there too. <laughs> You know what? I don't take. I don't. I don't. Har I, I've got one friend on Steam. I don't hardly pay no attention to it. I like friended EB a while ago for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, I don't really do any. I don't really. I'm not into multiplayer games. I pretty much just do single player. And so uh, I don't know. I just don't pay attention to friends on Steam. So when you first get here. Yeah, when you first get here, when you first install Steam, you to uh, go to Steam settings. Down here to Steam Play. And uh, enable Steam Play for supported titles is already checked. And that will... There's a white list of Steam games that Valve has approved and said these work. And uh, Battlefront 2 Classic from 2005 is one of those. How to find this list is not easy. But for all other Windows games that are not on the white list, you have to check this box. And us Linux folks call that Wild West Mode. And uh, it makes it so that Proton, which is the tool Valve uses to run Windows games on Linux will be enabled for all titles and not just 
the ones that are white listed. So you basically you you go you have one extra step that you would have to do if you were used to Windows, and that's click this button to play your Windows games on Steam in Linux. Now it depends. For instance, Far Cry was as simple as clicking the install and clicking the play button. Far Cry 2, however, I had to do a little bit of work to get it to get it going. Um, Call of Juarez is platinum rated, but for some strange reason, which means it just works. Hit install, hit play, it just works. But for some reason, it didn't work on two old laptops I had, even though it has a platinum rating. So, depending on your hardware and this is that, your your mileage may vary. That's it's not consistent. It's not a consistent experience between not only distributions but different hardware. But there's a tool for this, and that is let's probably ring up Firefox here. And uh what? Oh, here's um, Proton Database, Proton DB, and you go over here to Proton DB, and let's move this over here now. And it's, we got fifteen thousand one hundred and seventeen games that work on Linux. And of the top ten games, these two are platinum rated. These two are borked. Well, platinum is supposed to refer to uh, your um, your wrong dash. Platinum is supposed to refer to just hit click clay. I know it doesn't exactly work out that way when you actually read the uh, the Steam reports because you know they're just you and me. But platinum is supposed to be just hit play and it works with no configuration required. Gold is supposed to mean that there's configuration required, but once you get the configuration done, it's supposed to you're supposed to have full functionality. And what silver is supposed to mean is uh, even after you do all the configurations, yeah, the game's playable, but there might be some things that are messed up. Now, when you actually read people's reports, they don't necessarily understand what these ratings actually are. But platinum does not refer to the, is not supposed to be referred to the performance. It's supposed to be referred to if there's workarounds or not. And if there's no workarounds and it just works it's supposed to be a platinum rating. Now, like I said, there's just normal everyday people making these reports, so they don't always get it right. And so I've seen some silver stuff that takes a whole bunch of configuration, but after you go through the, all that configuration, it does. it is fully functional, and technically, that should be a gold rating. But yeah, most people don't fully understand what those ratings actually mean. And so a lot of people do misrate things in Proton Data in Proton DB. But um and I'll give an example of that. Is one I was all, one I was considering of purchasing actually. Aceto, is that the name of it? Yes. And so here we are. Aceto Corsa. And it's got a silver rating. But if you go ahead and look at the reports. Um... 
once you go through all the hoops and you're just, it's very good to get going takes too much effort for the casual gamer and there's a whole bunch of different you know people are having all kinds of different experiences and it's like, it's like here Occas okay occasional stability issues with certain mods but basically if everything works this technically should be a gold rating if you can go through all the hoops of doing all the configuration things you have to do and everything works Let's see overall even online play excellent so the, the 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 ratings that just normal everyday joes are putting in here but basically if it's you're you're looking for a platinum or a gold rating and if it's platinum or gold um you're probably going to get it to work if it's platinum it should just be hit install and hit play and if it's gold it depends it might just be as simple as uh changing something in a dot ini file or it may be more involved it depends on the game but you can check check compatibility reports with um proton db on your steam games So now, uh, what about games that are not on Steam? And you could do all this manually, but uh, for stuff that is not on Steam, or for some other reason, there's a tool called Lutris. And Lutris provides installers. And I'm, just, I'm, a, I'm in the moment, I'm a, I've got it paused right now. But uh, they have install scripts. And basically, boom, you hit install, and Lutris does all the wine tricks and whatever configuration that needs to uh, be done automatically for you. And yes, you could do all this manually in wine, but Lutris will do it for you and take all the hassle out of it. And so Lutris is a, uh, and uh, I will say that um, if you're using the Lutris search, it's real picky about how spellings and capitalization. So it is easier to use Google search and just put your game and Lutris after it than it is to use Lutris's built-in search bar. for games that are not on Steam and uh, there's a whole bunch of games on Lutris and I'm gonna show you Lutris now so let's bring Lutris up here and uh, these three whoops I actually installed with the Lutris script and then here we're cut we're back to your mileage may vary no one lives forever for the longest time had a stuttering sound problem and you would use the Lutris script to install it, and it would be all, all good to go, and the stuttering sound would be gone. What is going on with me now is if I launch this game from Lutris, even uh, I did use Lutris to install it, and both of these are free, by the way, and they're great games. They're uh, old abandonware. Um. The stuttering sound is back, but I can, however, go in here to games, no one lives forever, and launch it with, where's the nolf.exe, launch it with my system wine, and boom, it works again. So... Um, your mileage may vary on a lot of this stuff. 
Starfleet Command, Orion Pirates. There is not a Lutris installer for this, but I used, so I manually installed it with Lutris. And the reason I did that is it crashes on newer versions of Wine. And with Lutris, it's real easy to choose an older version of Wine that it works with and doesn't crash. And then another weird one was here, Scorch 3D. Now, there are Linux builds of this game. If you go to the website, they provide an, there's an RPM package that you can download. Um, that would work with like Red Hat distributions. Um, it is in the Ubuntu repository. And so if you're on an Ubuntu base, it's just, and you have all the, uh, repositories that repositories activated you sudo you know you, you can just install it from either your GUI package manager or from the terminal which is actually easier um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I think I've covered Lutris pretty good I'm just trying to do a simple overview here. Nothing. Uh... You'll take it. Oh, yeah. A lot of older games, a lot of your retro games um, do run better in Linux than they do on modern versions of Windows. It's a trip. And some don't. It just depends on the game. But a simple Google search will figure out what's going on with your particular game between Lutris and Proton Database Proton DB so I'm gonna go ahead and close this out because I'm not gonna have the Guild I'm in the process of downloading Guild Wars 2 I'm not sure how that's gonna work so far but the rest of these oh so Scorch 3D I was talking about that there's no, I could not find an arch build so instead of trying to figure out how to convert an RPM or a dot deb package to an arch package I just downloaded the Windows version of it and then I had the same problem I had with Orion Pirates it crashed on a newer version of Windows and so I just went in here and changed it to an older version of Wine same as I did with Starfleet Command Orion Pirates and the Windows version of this program that I could not find an arch package for works just fine so Lutris is a great tool for playing around with stuff to get it to work if it's not on Steam um, just close that out so what else was I going to talk about oh Far Cry 2 was a little bit difficult more difficult than uh, most games one of the things I did was I used a custom version of Proton called Glorious Egg Roll and if you actually follow through all of their instructions it's not that hard I'm just like click on here how to get out of dependency hell And blah 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 and here we go and while you do not have to work you do not have to use the terminal a lot of the times we do because it is simply easier because all of this stuff could be installed with the GUI software manager but it would be a pain in the booty um, and I already knew I had wine staging and wine tricks installed 
so I didn't need to go through that. It would be a pain in the booty to search all of these different packages and point and click and point and click and point and click and point and click. When you could simply, if you trust the website, copy. and paste that into the terminal and and of course I have all this whoa something's not I thought I did this already No, I don't want to reinstall all that stuff. It's up. It's telling me all this stuff is up to date. Do I want to reinstall it? No. Um, Ubuntu would have just told would have, would have gave me a different message. So, uh, so no, the terminal's not required, but once you're in Linux for a while, you will end up using it, using it a lot, or not. But you will end up, it's a lot easier to install software with the terminal once you have a vague clue of what you're doing. Um, and they give he gives he gives really detailed instructions for all different all the different distributions. Holy cow, look at all this stuff Fedora needs. You think I should go ahead and reinstall all them packages? Cuz it looked like it said they were all up to date and was going to reinstall them anyway. I don't know why I would do that. <laughs> I just did it, you know, not too long ago. Um, f as far as updates. I would say that, but this Monharo... I'm going to call Monharo Arch for Boomers or Arch for Dummies because... Uh, It, uh, basically, when I install, basically, when I installed this glorious egg roll, and I went through these how to get a wine dependency hell, this was basically the first time I actually used the terminal to install a good Linux distro for mom, grandpa. I would say... I would say Zubuntu because, and I'm not sure over Ubuntu Mate, you see a lot of uh, people um, talking about uh, Ubuntu Mate, and I don't know if this is still true because I haven't tried Mate in a long time. But the last time I called, tried Mate, it would not let me copy and paste from YouTube chat, and I don't know why. But I was like, that was like, no, uh, that was a big no for me. And I went back to uh, the XFCE desktop environment. So, and I normally would, I would normally would not suggest anything Arch based, but I don't see any reason why grandma and grandpa couldn't get along with Manharo XFCE but my for for a classic style desktop environment my my suggestion for someone new would be Zubuntu over Ubuntu vanilla or Ubuntu proper or Ubuntu mate but uh, it just depends um, let 
Right, and it, there's nothing wrong. I just personally... I personally don't like the GNOME desktop. I don't like the modern... The modern style... Uh, the modern style uh, desktop environments, but... Okay, so... For new users... I'm going to go ahead and type this in the chat. I would recommend Zubuntu or Monharo XFCE. And like I said, I, I can't believe I'm actually recommending an Arch base for new users. But uh, I've been really impressed. And yeah, the only difference... And maybe this is fixed on... Maybe this isn't fixed, but I could not... The last time I was on Mate, I couldn't copy and paste. There were certain places it wouldn't let me copy and paste, and it didn't make any sense. And that was just a no-go for me. But a lot of people do like the Mate desktop environment, and there's nothing wrong with that. But, and you know, that's the, that's the biggest problem. There's a whole bunch of different choices, and where do you start? And so those are just my simple, simple suggestions. And if we go, here, I'll, looks like we got some more people here. I'll go ahead and make this look a little bit more like Windows XP again. So, and like I said, this is all GUI. Um, panel preferences, point and click. There's nothing, lock the panel. And you can do all kinds of customizations. Make it look more like Windows. And, you know, it's the same thing as the... It's basically the same thing as your Windows taskbar. There's your start menu. Your quick launchers. I'll go ahead and launch the file manager. You know, Steam. I just put Lutris up there at the beginning of the video. And uh, you know, run an OBS. And I'm using the Snap, even though I'm on an Arch base, I'm using the Snap version of OBS because a lot of this stuff you would ha normally would have to add. I'm not sure what, but this menu would be smaller on just a vanilla install of OBS Linux version. And uh, the Snap bakes a lot of the extra stuff in. And so that's why I'm going to, I'm using the Snap version, even though I'm on the Arch base for uh, OBS. Go ahead and minimize that. So yeah, it's just all point and click stuff. It's not really, it's not really different. Now, is there anything I missed? That anyone might, as far as like basic misconceptions, that anyone might have uh, questions about. And as far as me and, and um, these two recommendations for new users, that's just my opinion. Other people may have different opinions. Oh, I didn't know that. But I do know that a lot of those uh, sources are not there in uh, a stock of vanilla. Because you can even say, let's go back, let's go back. Oh, it's down here now. It does say OBS modified. O ver um, and the modifications, the modifications, well, they, it's, it's because they bake the extras right into it. And you don't have to add the extra stuff yourself. It's because they modify it for you instead of you have... Because like I said, on a vanilla OBS install, some of this wouldn't be here. Some of the stuff in this menu would not be here. And uh, they do a really good job on that OBS snap. They bake in all the extra stuff right into it. And so that's why. 
so I don't have to manually bake in the extra stuff myself. The snap already does that. And so, um, and maybe there is an arch package where all that stuff is already, all the extra stuff is already baked in. And, and some of the stuff with, with newer versions, with um, newer versions of OBS, it might be baked, it might already be baked in in vanilla OBS. And maybe it wasn't before. Like when I first, the very first time I used OBS, the browser source wasn't part of the vanilla um, install, and you had to add that yourself. Where now that things are uh, with newer versions of OBS, I think the browser source on Linux is in the stock install now, but I'm not sure. I couldn't tell you for sure. I'm this drives me nuts. This panel being up down the bottom here. I'm putting it back where I'm used to it. Panel preferences, like you said. Unlock it. Stick it back up where I like it. Lock it back up. Close this. But there is a fully functional graphical user interface. You do not have to use the terminal. Um... We, w we just do because for a lot of things it is actually easier. Um, so I think I covered most of the basic misconceptions. Um, yeah, so you know what? I'm just concerned that they work, but now that you, uh, cool, yeah, no, and you will, and you'll no law and uh, Darius, no more Windows viruses messing up your machine. Um, it'll be great, and uh, you could actually theme it out. <laughs> To look like Windows and, and, and Grandma and Grandpa probably wouldn't even notice the difference. So, uh, but it's just something, you know, something to try. There is a learning curve. So, you know, give it a couple weeks to, to learn. Don't just like, if something, you know, don't just uh, discard it right away if something doesn't work right. And, uh, what's going on? Why is there stew? Okay, the friends list is up there. Close that out. You know, there is a learning curve involved. And, you know, not all software that is on Windows is on, uh, is on Linux. The same that not all software that is on Apple is on Windows and vice versa. But, no, it's not hard. It's not hard from a fresh install. Um, and as far as the install, I understand most, most Windows users have never ever installed an operating system before. But it is actually pretty easy. And it's way easier <laughs> and way faster than the last time I installed uh, Windows. Holy cow. Of course, that was back in the days of XP. Because when they when they dropped support for XP and was going to make me go to Windows 7, that was my pain point, and uh, I was already mad because Windows XP Service Pack 2, I finally liked Windows for the first time ever since using Windows all the way from when um, back from 3.11 was the first Windows I used, and I hated it coming from DOS. And uh, it just made everything slower. Yeah, you could point click and not know what you're doing, but Windows 311, if you knew what you were doing in DOS, it slowed down productivity, I swear, 10 times. And I finally liked Windows XP Service Pack 2 for the first time ever. And then 
Service Pack 3 came out and I avoided it and avoided it and avoided it for as long as I could. But I finally had a piece of hardware I had to upgrade to Surface Pack 3. And it made my computer run like dog shit. It just slowed it way the hell down. It ran like pond water. So I was like, I was, I had had it with Windows bullshit. And so 2012, when they uh, dropped support for XP, that was my pain point that uh, pushed me over to Linux. And uh, things were pretty good back in 2012, but they definitely were not as good as they are now. And uh, I didn't have any issues whatsoever. It's like, wow. This is just like Windows XP, but instead of because I started with Ubuntu, and I pretty much had been on, I've been on Ubuntu Zubuntu since 2012 until this newish hardware made me go to an Arch base to get rid of some uh, issues that weren't worked out on Ubuntu base yet. Because I'm not I'm not much of a distro hopper. Now, when I did have more than one laptop. I would play around with different distributions on the spare laptop, but my my main rig is pretty much minus the 1604 cycle, because even the 1404 cycle, I uh, I in, I installed standard Ubuntu instead of Zubuntu, but immediately added the XFCE desktop environment to it and did not use unity and then uh, i ended up liking unity so i did use vanilla ubuntu for a couple years and then they just and then they uh, dropped unity and i was right back to ubuntu <laughs> but uh <clears throat> so i think i've covered most of the misconceptions I haven't tried Guild Wars 2 yet in Linux with the Lutris installer. Like I said, it's still downloading stuff, and I don't have that going on right now because it likes to hog the bandwidth. But, uh, yes, there is a GUI. Did I? Oh, I did install LibreOffice. Cool, cool. So you don't need to use the terminal. No, 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 not Unity Game Engine, Unity 7 desktop environment. It was a It was actually a really nice desktop environment. Um Nothing makes me nervous. It's like it's still pretty simple. Go here to updates. Check for updates. Since I have, you know, I have, I've been using apt all this time, and uh, system is up to date. And you can, and updating is so simple. And you can update in the background. Well, whoops. And uh, and. Uh, I still haven't had to learn Pac-Man File Manager because the GUI tools do everything I need. I did, like I said, um, I showed it earlier when they, when they, when the, when Glorious Egg Roll gave specific instructions. Yeah, I can copy that paste and I can understand what that command is. And copy and paste that in the terminal. And hell yeah, that's going to be way easier than clicking and searching all those different packages in the GUI. But there hasn't been anything I haven't liked. And I st still haven't, I, like I said, I still haven't learned Pac-Man because uh, the GUI's doing everything. The GUI's fine. So I've decided I'm calling... Uh, Monharo, Arch for Dummies, or uh, Arch for Boomers, because 
there's nothing complicated about this particular flavor of arch although i definitely would not want to dump arch in uh basic you know arch proper on a new user that would be pretty cruel <laughs> um Yeah. And of course, Ubuntu, another reason uh, you would, uh, I would, you know, I would recommend Zubuntu just because I don't like GNOME. And that's just my opinion, which is another desktop environment, what they call one of these modern desktop environments. Um, and another thing about Ubuntu, if you search a problem, um, let's just go, let's just use this example, Proton Prerex. And go here. Graphics drivers, quick start, Ubuntu 18.04. When you search stuff, if you have an issue and you do a Google search or whatever search engine you want to use, chances are something about how to fix it or how to install it or whatever, Ubuntu is going to be at the top of the list. No matter. So that's why... Anytime you search something about Linux, the the answer for Ubuntu is going to be the top in the top two. So uh, there's that. So I think I've covered all of. Let me close that out. Um. And even though a lot of the, you know, so a lot of the software you're not gonna you're not going to uh, you're not gonna use your Adobe software, but a lot of the stuff you use on Windows, it's like there there is I've got the Discord Discord involved, Steam, OBS. Um, you can install Chrome. I have not had a reason to install Chrome yet, so Firefox is good enough for me. And uh, it's about it's about the only fire it's about the only browser that isn't based on Google Chromium or Google Chrome. And so it, it's it's about the only way, browser-wise, to get away from Google. So, uh, minimize OBS. Oh, Far so yeah, Far Cry 2. I did have to uh Glorious Egg Roll using Glorious Egg Roll instead of uh instead of a stock version of Proton gained me about 10 frames per second and then this command here gave me a whole bunch of frames per second <clears throat> and uh, got rid of the stuttering and stuff like that and so and it's and again it's just if you want to use a different version <clears throat> you just come down here in the uh, And click on it now 
here's another example of your mileage may vary. Fallout New Vegas. <clears throat> On my 3400G desktop was indeed as simple as clicking install and clicking play. On this machine, it defaulted to Proton Experimental and in Proton Experimental I had screen tearing in the opening screen and so I selected Proton 6.3-5 and that uh, fixed it and that fixed that issue so I had to do one extra step other than install and hit play and just select a different version of Proton but uh, Proton Experimental works fine on my desktop so but I think of all of all these that are on here a uh, Doyce X game of the year edition they, they tried to tell you mods don't work no nope, that's false this game is fully modded up with uh, whatever the heck that name of that mod is, and it works just fine. That's another. Uh... So, uh, out of all these games, they all work good. Um, the only one, um, Elite Dangerous, I haven't tried. I tried it a long, I tried it about a year ago on some hardware that just wasn't good enough to run it. So I haven't, and how, so I, I haven't tried to get that working yet, but people do have Elite Dangerous working on Linux. It probably does take some work to get it going. Uh, Free Space 2 don't work. I just installed it so that Gnosis, Gnosos could grab the files it needs, and I can still play that with Gnosos. Um... But I'm, I'm trying to look for something that... But most of this stuff, the Shadowrun series has native Linux ports. Um, this Dark Forces 2 and Mysteries of the Sith. I had to do the same thing to it that you would have to do to get it running on a modern Windows install. Um, Republic Commando is basically platinum. The menu's a little weird. I think you the win, but it plays just fine, no problem. Um, I should just remove that from my library. I'm probably not going to play that again. Yeah, I just couldn't get into uh, Swotor, but it worked just fine. So uh, yeah, The Witcher Enhanced Edition was another one. Hit install, hit play. Nothing to, uh... <clears throat> no, I don't. The only, uh... The only programming I've done since high, since high school has been, uh... My custom game controller. Which I had to, uh... It was a Teensy++, so I used the uh, Arduino IDE... And like I said, you don't really, it, and all the libraries are already written for you, so it's like a very, very simplified C++. I do have a, I do have a, um, whatever. I do have that script on the, uh, on my Google Drive and there's a link to it and that was like um but I'm for the most part I'm just an end user is there any question I missed But with the Arduino IDE, it just simplifies the hell out of using C++ for you. Right? 
as long as you don't compile or develop stuff, the difference between systems is fairly low. Okay, so this, as far as here, yeah, it's hardly, it's not very much different. Well, all the language, all the languages are are available on Linux for the most part. <laughs> well, good luck. Um, but like I said, I think I, uh, I think I've covered the basic misconceptions, and uh, I didn't, I didn't intend for this video to be this long. Uh, dun 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 dun. Whoops. Oh yeah, Far Cry 2. Get out of the way. Close that. So, uh... And the main thing was, like, there is a GUI. You don't have to use the terminal. And... There's a good chance... that your games are going to work unless they involve kernel level anti cheat so easy so uh and some of those if you have a really good internet connection can get be gotten around with uh, geforce now but no adobe products aren't going to work they're all our turn there are both free uh, there are open source and proprietary alternatives and yes, there will be a time investment involved in learning new software. They're not, they are not uh, drop-in replacements. They are alternatives. Because if it was a drop-in replacement, you wouldn't have to learn anything. And the truth is that you are, there is going to be a time investment involved in learning new software if the particular program you use is not available on Linux. So, uh... Oh, thank you so much. It's It's been great. Um... There's Zany. And this... This, this has gone on a lot longer than I expected it to. So, uh... I think I'm going to go ahead and end it now. But, uh, thanks for showing up and, uh, reminding me some, of some things I may have forgot to uh, talk about in the chat. And I'll see you all later. And I'll get back to playing games. I usually, usually my, my content on this channel is just playing some game and I hardly ever actually talk about Linux, but I've seen so much stuff in uh, in comments on different videos that just simply aren't true, and I couldn't help myself. I had to say, no, 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 you're all wrong, and I'm showing you. So uh, have a good day, everybody, and I'll get back to gaming later on. Bye-bye. <laughs>